Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is alive and we are declaring that death and sickness and devil and sin have been defeated in the name of Jesus. That is the preaching of the gospel. It is the abolition of death. It is the preaching of power, victory over death, over sin, over sickness, over self, over world, carnality, and over our arch enemy, the last enemy, death. It is all abolished by the gospel of the kingdom. I want you to listen to this message and you will know and appreciate the power of the gospel. As long as we are in this world, the power of God is channeled through the preaching of the gospel. So without preaching the gospel, there is no power at all. There's nothing you can do about it. Now, I want you to see a few things. Let us pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this gathering and assembly together of the saints. We thank you for Royal Victory Church International. It is the root out of dry ground. It is the counsel of God. It is the stone that was thrown out with your hands and that demolished the image of Nebuchadnezzar. It is the power of God unto salvation. The royal victory is part of the worldwide church, part of the divine plan of God. Jesus said about it, he said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. So this is the church of God. This is part of the worldwide church that is moving and overcoming the power of the world. Thank you, Father, for counting us in among your own children, among your body. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting us, for dying for us, and for giving us the greatest weapon, the preaching of the gospel. For the preaching of the gospel is the power of God. Is the power of God unto salvation. The preaching of the gospel is the sound mind, sound reasoning. The preaching of the gospel is the love of the Father for the world. The preaching of the gospel is the declaration of the abolition of death. The preaching of the gospel is the declaration of the enthronement of life and immortality. Thank you, Father, for electing us to preach the gospel. This we pray in Jesus' name. Now let's go together, let's go together about the gospel. I want you to bring out your notes because the things I will say, probably you would like to have them and remember them again and again. And that is the way we can set our church a fire for Christ. Now, the whole earth is in darkness, no doubt about it. And the gospel is the light that rekindles hope in the world. You can see that in Ephesians 4, 18. I want somebody to begin to read as fast as possible. In Ephesians 4, there's a revelation about the situation of the heart of man and the situation of the whole world. Okay, let somebody read it. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. That is wonderful. Having the understanding, don't what? Darkened. Understanding, darkened. Darkened understanding. That means that 
the whole people are walking without understanding. That's why Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they do not know. They do, they do not know what they are doing. Their understandings are darkened. Being alienated from the life of God. Oh my God. Alienated from the life of God. You see that? Through the ignorance, lack of knowledge, sheepishness, through the ignorance that is in them. There is darkness, there is ignorance in almost all the people who don't have God through the gospel. Because of the blindness of their heart. Their heart was darkened and their knowledge was darkened, their imaginations were darkened. So they were doing evil, thinking that they were doing good. This is the situation of the world until the gospel. So the gospel is coming to change this status quo. The gospel is coming to challenge the status quo. The status quo is darkness. The status quo is the dark heart. The status quo is fallen and depraved humanity. So you can see the importance of the gospel. Some people think that God will do anything just from heaven unto them which have the channel. God has chosen a channel. The channel God has chosen to touch everything in life. In your life, in my life, in the world is through the gospel. Now you will open your eyes about the gospel very soon because I have documented a few things for you today. Now, notice that number one, the heart was darkened and the earth was darkened. So, how can we bring the light? Now, look at what Jesus said in Luke 24, 44 to 47. Just follow me as I read. Luke 24, 44 to 47. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all things must be fulfilled. So we are in the era of fulfillment of uh, promises and uh, prophecies. This is the year. All things must be fulfilled. Which we are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets. In the Psalms concerning me. This is the time to fulfill things that are written. Both in the law and the gospel. Concerning what Jesus came to do. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. That is the gospel. To suffer, to rise from the dead, to die, to rise again. Remember that that is the third thing the gospel is, is the life, the sinless life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus. This is the three ingredients in the gospel. We tell this thing, you are not preaching the gospel. We tell this, you are not preaching the gospel. And this thing I mentioned here, this three things is called the power of God unto salvation. If you tell somebody simply that Jesus died for him, and Jesus resurrected for him. That Jesus is alive for him. You have preached the gospel. Look at the assignment Jesus gave to, to them from what Jesus said. Jesus talked about his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. And in 47, Jesus gave them the great commission, the assignment. The, look at the assignment. Everybody say assignment. Remember that I told you before that there is a difference between your job, your profession, and your, the assignment. The assignment is the Great Commission, which is for every Christian, every believer. Now, look at what Jesus said in 47. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached, hallelujah, in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. This is the gospel. You can see that Jesus talked about his life, his death, and his resurrection, and told them that this things must be preached in all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And that was the, what the early church did. The early church preached that, that the Christ you crucified, he is alive now. The same Jesus, which you crucified with 
Pilate and all the Jews with the scribes and the Pharisees that he is alive today. That is what Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost. Say so that you people, you and the Jews and the Gentiles, all of you conspired together to crucify him. But God has raised him from the dead. That is the gospel. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, let us talk about the gospel. Gospel, what is then the gospel? If we have already made the background, you have already heard it, that the gospel brings the openness of the eyes. When Jesus preached the gospel to them, they, their eyes was opened. The gospel is enlightenment of the heart. The heart was enlightened. The gospel is soundness of the mind. The mind was sound. The gospel brings knowledge. The gospel brings life and immortality. Now, listen, the gospel is so important than you ever can imagine. Now, the gospel is also a roadmap to the promises of God. This year, we are talking about fulfillment of the promises. If you don't have any idea of the gospel, there's no fulfillment of promises for you. Because the gospel is what brings the idea of the promises. It is like a man who is to build a house. He calls an architect. The architect makes a blueprint, what we call the plan of the house. So when the builders look at the plan, they build. And when they finish the house, the house will look in principle, technically, like the plan that we are seeing. So the gospel is the plan of God. The gospel is the promises of God. The gospel is the roadmap. It shows you what belongs to you. It shows you how to defeat your enemies. It shows you how to have eternal life. This is something you can never miss. It shows you what belongs to you. It shows you how to defeat your enemies. It shows you the way to the, your eternal life. So the gospel is a roadmap. It is the compass for a traveler. It shows you all the promises of And the gospel has power to change the heart. What are the things that we and everyone realizes from the gospel? Both the hearers and the preachers. What do they get? Number one, eternal life. Everybody knows John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. For God gave his son, the Lamb of God, who died. You see that? And rose again. This is the gospel. That whosoever believes in this account, that Jesus lived and died and rose again, the same person shall have eternal life. You can see that? The preaching of what happened at Calvary. Is what the gospel is. Somebody begin to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So no wonder when I was in the hospital. I was lying on the bed. The Lord came upon me. And was telling me about the gospel. In fact that has changed my life. And that has changed my preaching. Telling you the gospel is the most important thing. As long as we are waiting for the second coming of Christ. The most important thing is the gospel. And I want the royal victory to take it as important as God is taking it. Because it's through the gospel that souls come to the kingdom. Nothing else. Later you will know the embattlement for the gospel. That is where I will, I will bring you on later. But hold that the gospel is the bringer of eternal life. The gospel is the channel for eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus... And the story of the life and the death of Jesus and the resurrection is what the gospel is. And Paul said that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And the gospel is the wisdom of God as well. Now the second thing the gospel will do, both to, to your hearers and to yourself who is preaching, is the gospel is the means through which healing Healing of your mind, healing of your body, healing of your mortal body, healing of your circumstances, healing of your family, healing of your marriage, healing of your total man. Total man. It comes from the gospel. 
You can see that in Luke 9, 6. Luke 9, 6. Let somebody read what Luke 9, 6 says here. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Very good. So they set out, or they departed, and went from village to village. That is what Royal Victory is called to do. Preaching the gospel and healing people everywhere. You can see that the preaching and the healing come together there. Because the word of the gospel brings healing. Because it is light. The entrance of his word bringeth light. So you can see that eternal life is with the gospel. Healing is with the gospel. Then how about restoration? Restoration of everything. Your properties that are stolen by the devil. Restoration of your marriage that was scattered by the devil. Restoration of your life that was scattered by diseases and by pestilence. How do you get them back again? By the gospel. Let somebody read John 10.10. 10. You will see the scriptures you know before will make better meaning for you. John 10.10, 10, what is it? Thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Powerful, very, very wonderful. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I, that is Jesus, who lived perfect life and died and rose again, and that is the gospel, come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Somebody say amen. Amen. So the gospel changes everything. It is a restaurant. So if the devil has taken anything from you or from your community or from your nation or from anywhere, the answer is in the gospel. That is the restoration. If we don't preach the, the gospel to the Muslims, they will continue to destroy and thinking that they are serving God. You know that most of the people who are destroying, the, the thing that they are, the Muslims think that they are serving God by killing and by, because they don't know the gospel. Their hearts are darkened. But the gospel will change them. There are a lot of Muslims that have repented. They are no more destroying and killing. The gospel has saved them. So you can see the importance of the gospel. Then the restoration of the years. Oh, this is very powerful. Listen. Because a lot of people, including science, tells us that, that there's nothing you can do to bring back the time that is past. They said when the time has passed, it is past forever. But we hear in the gospel that God is a restorer of the years the canker worms have. So that means that God can pull from the back where the years that have been passed and bring them again and restore the things which we are stolen, which we are taken for you over those years. Let us see how the gospel does that. The restoration of the years. In Joel 2.25, let somebody read it there. Let somebody read it. I want the people to be soaked by the by the knowledge of God through the gospel. Read Joel 2.25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Now, God said that I will restore to you the years that something has happened. That means that God said, the year you lost important person in your family, maybe it is your father or your mother, maybe it is an uncle, or maybe it is somebody special in your life, or the year that your business collapsed or something, the enemy did something. Every one of us have such years we can remember. The years that you cried and cried and cried and cried. The Lord says he can restore years back to us. This is good news. And this can be done through the gospel. Yes. He said, I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. This is one of the most fantastic, in fact, scripture I've seen. If the years that are past can be restored, man, you have to pray with this scripture. Tell God to restore what was. The decades of losses can be restored. The decades of losses yes. can be restored. He said, I will restore the years. God can restore years. 
God can make you to look even younger than your age. Because he will restore the age. <laughs> he will restore the, the years that have been passed. We call that rejuvenation. God is an expert. If you pray and ask him, he will restore your years. That is a very big promise. Look at it here. He said what the canker worms have eaten. Do you know what canker worms is? is every infectious disease is in this class. The worms. They are in the worm forms. They are the canker worms. Do you know what caterpillars are? The caterpillars will eat and eat the leaves. They eat the life of the tree. The caterpillar. Do you know what the palmer worms are? The palmer worms, they eat the stalk. They don't eat the leaves. They eat the stalk. When you think that the tree is alive, the, the palmer worms, they have already eaten the very stem of the tree. Do you know what the locusts eat? The locusts can consume all the farms, the leaves and the fruit. So the years these things have been eaten, God said he can restore. I want you to say, God restore my past years of losses. Fantastic. Say it again. Say, God restore my past years of losses. Now that is what the gospel does. Please preach the gospel. The preaching of the gospel is touching you, the preacher, and is touching them, your hearers, that you may save yourself and save those who hear you equally. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, see what again the gospel does. Then, oh, this is, this is too powerful. This is too powerful. It's very, very powerful. You have to, you have to tighten up your seat belt because I'm going to tell you something that is so fantastic. Now, if I ask you what is the gospel, what are you going to say? Now, I want to show you what the Bible says. The gospel means God's spell. God's spell. G-O-D spell. That's what gospel means. Gospel means the potent word of God that changes all things. Can we say that together? The potent word of God that changes all things. Now, that is what the gospel is. It is a word spoken that can change situation, change circumstances, change matter, change issues. So it is a spoken word, but it has potent power. That is where you also have the opposite of the gospel is magic spell. Magic spell is used by the witches and the wizards to bring curses on people. When they curse you, they bring power, power to fail. You see that? So magic spell brings curses to bring somebody to fail. It's empowerment to fail. Empowerment to fail. So the person will fail in everything he does. Even where he qualifies, he fails. That's his cause. That's why when people are failing, 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 we ask them whether they were cursed. How can we break the cause of the magic spell? Before I tell you this, I want you to read Revelation 18.23. You see what magic spell does. And the magic spell is used by witchcraft, witches, wizards, and evil men, witch doctors. They place curses on people in order to destroy their lives. And the people are empowered to fail. Empowered to fail. It's called magic spell. Let's probably read Revelation 18.23. He's talking about Babylon there. Okay, go ahead. The light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all the nations deceived. Powerful. Okay, let's remember read in uh, NIV. NIV. Is there any NIV there? I want to get, get a word, magic spell. That is the word. I know that they mean the same thing as sorcery. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's important people. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. Very good. That's the word I want to pick. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. Now, the magic spell is spoken word by a witch or a wizard. That's what magic spell is. 
is a spoken word. It's not slapping. It's not fighting. No hand is taught, but a word that is spoken, which has negative power, which can destroy life. Now, you can see that the Bible says Babylon, Babylon was full of witches and wizards. And what is Babylon? Babylon is the, is the world. The world as it is, is full of magicians, full of evil men who speak evil words. You see that? If somebody is not born again, he is in this class. That's why God said, come out of her. Come out of Babylon. Come out of the world. Be thou separate. So the church is called Ecclesia, which means the people that are called out from the world. That's what the church is. So the church are people who are called out from this magic spell. We were there before. We were in the world before. But right now, we are in the church. The church does not operate by magic spell. The church operates by another spell called God's spell. The church operates by another spell called God's spell. Now, look at what magic spell does. Magic spell leads people astray. Magic spell condemns people. Magic spell that bring causes and causes empower people to fail. Whatever they do, they fail. Then, the opposite is what Jesus brought. Hallelujah! What did Jesus bring? Jesus bring the God's spell. Look at how we use the gospel to overcome the magic spell. Mark 8.35. Let us read it. Let somebody read it there. The gospel is made to overcome the magic spell. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Now go, go to Matthew. As you have heard this one now, Jesus equated the gospel as himself in that place. Go to Matthew 28. We are going to read Matthew 28. 18, 19, 20. Let's see the empowerment of the gospel. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Look at, when Jesus came out of the grave, when he rose again, on that Sunday morning, the most important thing he gave to them was not... <laughs> hallelujah. Now, the most important thing Jesus gave to them, when he rose from the dead, was not to feel sorry. Oh, oh, what, what did I do that they did me all these things? Look at my hand. Look at what, what they did to me. He didn't complain what anybody did to him. When he came out from the dead, he didn't say, Oh, these people are very, very wicked. These people who killed me, they are wicked. They are. He didn't do something like that. Do you know when Jesus came out from the dead? Do you, do you know what he said? All power in heaven on earth. Is. He used the word is. He didn't say are because there's one power. He said all power in the whole universe, both in heaven and on earth, is given to me. And then he gave what we today call the Great Commission. The Great Commission is the empowerment to preach the gospel. He said, now I give you power to go and preach the gospel. He said, by you preaching the gospel, hey, hey. You will convert souls. You will disciple them. You will, you will teach them everything I have taught you. And I will be with you. Even to the end. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, the Great Commission. Now, in Matthew, we told you that the gospel is the only weapon to counter the magic spell. The magic spell brings causes. Causes bring limitation. Causes is empowerment to fail. When a witch or a wizard or a witch doctor or an evil person places a curse on somebody who is not born again, it works. 
they will limit their progress. They will bring untimely death. By the word they spoke, not, in, not, not even their hands. They will speak the word, they will do some incantations, and it works. But if you are born again, if the gospel is in your heart, the greater spell will destroy the magic spell. What is the greater spell? God's spell. God's spell is the senior spell. Magic spell by witches cannot overturn, overthrow God's spell. Amen. You must note this one. This is very important. That is why we preach. If people do not have the gospel, they are prone. They are prone to the magic spell. They can be destroyed by their enemies. Somebody from a, a far place can cause them and it will work because they don't have the gospel. So the gospel comes to destroy Babylon. Babylon is the world system that uses the magic spell. You can see Revelation 18.23. That is Babylon. Babylon the Great. What is Babylon the Great? The world. The whole world. Which are the church. The church is called out of Babylon. He said, come out of them and be thou separate. Then I will receive you. That is the church. And Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail. What is the gate of hell? Babylon. It shall not prevail against the church. So that is why the world does not like us. If you are born again, the world don't like you. You see that Jesus said, don't worry about them liking you or not liking you. Because if they hated me, they will also hate you. So why are you worried whether the world like you or not? So all you need to arm yourself with is the gospel. With the gospel in your heart and in your lips. Magic spell will never work anymore. Over you, over your family, over your marriage, over anything. Because gospel is superior to magic spell. Remember that we are fighting with spells. Spells means potent words that you throw. In the spirit, you don't fight with knife. You don't fight with, uh, with bullets. You don't fight with guns. The things you fight is with your mouth. In the spirit, the whole war is the war of mouth. And when you speak it, it comes to pass. So that's why you must arm yourself with the God's word, The word of God, which is superior to every other word, every other spirit, can speak to you in the spirit. That's the greatest thing Jesus has given to us, is the gospel. That's why he said, it will calculate the end of time. He said, he said this world will never end until the gospel is preached to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Then the end shall come. That shows you the importance of the gospel. How come you are not preaching the gospel, child of God? Man of God, how come you are not preaching the gospel? People are dying. How come you are not preaching the gospel? If we preach the gospel, we are going to save souls. Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Nothing else can replace the gospel. Nothing else. And look at it here. I showed you Revelation 18.23. This is very, very important. I showed you Ephesians 4.18, which is very, very important. That shows you the nature of man. The heart of the man is darkened. The only thing that can bring the light is the gospel. And if you don't preach the gospel, then... They will die in their sins. Now, the next thing which I told you to hold your seatbelt very tightly because this is very, very, very powerful. This one is in the book of Timothy. Second Timothy. <laughs> Second Timothy 1.10. I call it the abolition of death. Everybody say that together. Say abolition of death. You see that most of you who read the history in your secondary school and this heard about the abolition of slave trade by William Weber Force, by Lincoln, all great men, these are men of God who love God, they abolished slave trade. But Jesus abolished death. And I tell you the truth, we need Christian researchers who will research into this and find out how man can live 120 years, how man can live 200 years without dying until Christ comes. I'm telling you, these things are real. Only thing is that Christians are following the world. It has robbed us of so many things. Let's go to the Bible. I show you things. Second Timothy 1. Let somebody read. Begin to read 9 and 10.
who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He said that Jesus Christ has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Everybody says through the gospel. So the gospel is so important than you talked ever before. The gospel is the declaration of the abolition of death. And in the spirit, Jesus abolished death. That's what happened when he died, he went to hell. Hell is the domain of death and Satan. That's where all the demons live. That's their home. That's where the arch enemy called Lucifer, that's where he lives. That's where death comes from, from hell. And Jesus went there and did what? Took the power of hell from them. He took the key from Satan. And thereby abolishing death. I'm telling you today, the key of life and death and hate, they are all in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know why people still die and go to hell? They don't know the gospel. Nobody preached to them or they rejected the gospel. Do you know that whether dying or living does not matter here. What matters is what is after. Hell or heaven. But the abolition of death is real. You will know that. Because in the spirit in the spirit, which is the real world, there is no death. We have everlasting life. No death. Jesus abolished death. You see that? The true meaning of death is total separation from God. Total separation from God. That is the meaning of death. Then death showed up in the physical to mean separation of the spirit of God in you and your body. That's what causes you to die, physically. But in the spirit, it is the separation of man from God. So Jesus abolished death. And when he abolished death, he did the second thing. The second thing is what I call, please write it down, enthronement of life and immortality by the gospel. Write it down. Enthronement of life and immortality by the gospel. Where we read now, we heard that Jesus has abolished death and he has brought to life, life and immortality. He has enthroned life and immortality through the gospel. Through the gospel. I'm telling you, I was, I was visiting a sister, Sister Ijoma in Nigeria, in Portacourt. When I was the president of uh, Sunray Fellowship International, the sister had an accident and he nearly died. He was rushed to the hospital and I went to the hospital to pray for, for her. While I prayed for her, something happened. I can't forget this. Something happened. I have finished praying with Sister Ijoma and I was about to go. Sister Ijoma was still on bed with pins and wires. I was about to go. Some people were crying in another world. A lady was shouting and crying. Somebody has died. I quickly left City Joma and rushed into that world. And I saw a woman lying on the bed. I, I could see the eyes. The eyes is white throughout. Rolled. No more black. No more purple. It's white. And the woman was just tense. It was the daughter who was watching over her that was crying. And all the doctors and the nurses, they were running up and down. They didn't know what to do. They were in confusion. I told the doctor, can I pray? Can I pray for her? The doctor just said, okay, yes, 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 yes. The nurses, they all cleared. I said, now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, you death. You spirit of death, it will not happen. You are not going to talk to this woman. I am here in the hospital. You will never take the life of this lady while a child of God is here. I rebuke you, spirit of death. Get out of her. In Jesus' name. Do you know, within the next few minutes, the eyes rolled back. The, the black one, the people came back again. 
And there was silence in the hospital. And the woman moved her hands. And the daughter, in fact, the woman raised up, was raised up immediately. Do you know what happened? The gospel <laughs> encountered the spirit of death. And the gospel, <laughs> because Jesus, who is the author of the gospel, died and rose again. So the gospel has power to defeat death. So death was defeated in the life of that woman and she rose back again. But do you know what happened? <laughs> Another miracle happened immediately. The sister Ijoma, whom I came to see, has already lost the wires and the pins in her body because she had my voice praying. She was standing by my at my back. The lady that was not moving was already standing to see whom I was praying for. Two people were, were here in that hospital. Somebody shout hallelujah. The gospel is the power of God to salvation. If you arm yourself with the gospel, you will do great exploits. So because the gospel is abolition of death, and the gospel is the enthronement of life and immortality. This is what we say in conclusion. The Bible says in the book of Second Timothy 1 7 that death ran by the by fear. Fear. But the gospel come to remove fear, defeat fear, and bring power, bring love, and bring sound mind. Second Timothy one seven. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But God gave us the spirit of the gospel. What is the spirit of the gospel? Power, power love, and sound mind. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is where the life in the flesh, the life in the flesh, the life in the flesh is in darkness without the gospel. The heart of man is in darkness without the gospel. The whole earth is lying in self-deceit and going to hell without the gospel. So the gospel is, in summary, look at summary. The gospel is, number one, is the power of God to salvation. Number two, the gospel is love. Love of the Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. So, and the gospel is sound mind. The mind of Christ that we use. Remember that our mind has been corrupted. We don't, you can't use your mind. Your own mind will lead you astray. But if you use the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ through the gospel, you are going to succeed. The gospel is power, is love, is sound mind. Then, the gospel is abolition of death. The gospel is enthronement of life and immortality. Can you see the package? I package for you. This is summary. So, you must preach the gospel. Wherever you preach the gospel, you can heal the sick. You can see that? The Bible says, they preach the gospel and they heal all manner of sickness and diseases. And how about Jesus Christ, who went about doing good and he was healing all manner of sickness by the gospel he was preaching. Jesus is the author of the gospel. And the gospel is a war, a war against Babylon the Great. You know that Babylon the Great is the system of the world that brings magic spell. Magic spell can bring causes. Causes can limit people's progress. Causes is empowerment to fail. It comes through the magic spell, Babylon. And what, what can overthrow Babylon is the gospel. Because the gospel is God's spell, which means the potent word of God that overcome or overthrow the magic spell. Mm -hmm. This is the end of the message today. I believe you are blessed. If you have packaged all these things, you can move forward with it and you can preach the gospel this year and we will see great harvest and great results. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless 
the message you have given to me to the people. Let this message bring a total revolution in royal victory. It will not end by hearing it once, because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. Let this message be heard again and again and again until every royal victory member will run with the gospel. Until both the preacher and those that are listening will be served by the gospel and will be enhanced by the gospel, will be healed by the gospel, will be made new by the gospel. The gospel will defeat doubt, it will defeat worry, it will defeat sickness, it defeats every form of darkness. May you be blessed as you have heard this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Amen.